y'all? I'm Steve with Elevate, and today we're gonna do another Elevated 8. I'm super excited about this one. We got a moth to a flame. This guy has been around for a while. Holy mackerels, without him, this industry just might not be here. Uh, he's had a huge influence in it, so I'm so excited to get ready to sit down with him. I wanna put it out there really quickly. Don't forget, we got this Elevate brand ambassadors things going on. Elevate Dolls and Elevate Gents. It's really awesome. As well as we have Elevate Veterans. It's a really cool thing, 501c3, and you can help out some vets that, you know, have helped out this country a bit. Anyways, let's roll into this Elevated 8 with like a moth to a flame. Well, all right, welcome to Elevated 8. and We got like a moth to the flame today. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you for having me. Hell yeah, man, pleasure. And, uh, First thing is, uh, you're a real OG in this uh, glass game industry. Um, and when did you get started in this? Uh, July 6th of 94, actually. Was, Man. Uh, when, when I got my first torch in the mail uh, and a bunch of glass and some, some a book and a video back in the VHS tape days. <laughs> it was like, you know, before DVDs even existed. Yeah. Let me tell you, VHS tape was not easy. Yeah. <laughs> And so how exactly, how did you get into this glass game? Like I, thought I had taken a, a, uh, a little trip on Grateful Dead tour and uh, I saw Bob blowing glass uh, out of his VW bus at Deer Creek. And uh, honestly, I had eaten a bunch of mushrooms and was about to go into the show. And I was so mesmerized by what I walked by. I didn't expect to see this or anything. I walked by and this guy making you know some of the first color changing glass pipes out of his little bus you know and i was like man i sell a lot of weed i could sell glass pipes too that would be awesome and i've always been into fire and like fire as a tool now this really fascinated me rather than you know as a form of destruction you know and i was just like oh i can create with this too and i ended up miracle my tickets away and sat there and, and watched him for hours and hours and hours until like so the mushrooms finally wore off enough that I had enough courage to go. Always been a bashful guy, so like uh, like talking to people hasn't always been the easiest thing. I always get kind of clammed up, whatever. But I finally had enough courage to talk to him. I was so fascinated by this, I, I had no choice but to ask him all about it. And he was kind and and you know shared lots of information with me and where I could you know get tools and equipment and glass and uh, yeah, well apparatus was it. And <laughs> after I got off tour, I. Uh, spent a lot of money and got myself uh, situated and so yeah i don't know that's that was a uh, i mean that was didn't have anybody back in those days as you know that you know people didn't share information very you know it was not widely you know shared thing it's not like it is today we didn't have internet didn't have you know anything i think i still had a pager probably <laughs> yeah yeah i'm sure that was during the yeah, like there was no cell phones there was no internet there was no anything like that back then and you know getting and I, at the time uh i was in Asheville, north carolina and there was nobody else there making pipes and i'm kind of uh i don't know a lot of people consider me to be the first one in that now which is a mecca for glass you know but, but mm -hmm. like that was where it all started for me and uh the first 12 years of glass blowing were there in Asheville, and uh, yeah i don't know like, I just one day after another, uh, things just kept evolving and I kept, you know, there was a huge demand. There were lots of head shops there, but no real supply. Most things were on the West Coast. You know, that was all, mm -hmm. that was where everything was really taken off, you know. So, like, there's somebody there in, in a town that was, you know, kind of herb friendly. And at any rate, uh, I, I, I made bank. <laughs> like, I don't even know if I make as much now as I did back in the, the olden days, you know. And I was like, gosh, I don't know. I could tell. I, yeah. I could sell Franken pipe for sixty dollars wholesale. <laughs> right, the, because I, like everything, supply and demand. Uh, right, you know, it's exactly. not just American blowers that have increased; uh, uh, foreign blowers have increased. Right. Everything, everything's changing like this. Uh, but yeah, I remember the first pipes. It was just silver fuming usually, and people yeah. weren't even used gold. But it was, yep. it was so groundbreaking and so like, what the fuck? Yeah, yeah, that's exactly. Yeah, it was pretty cool. Like, uh, I think, I don't know, I think about it, you know, all that we had to go through back then um, to create new and better looking art, you know, with such limited amount of materials. I mean, I think uh, there were 16 colors to choose from, seven of which were different shades of cobalt. Right. You know? <laughs> like that was, you know, that was where it all began. You know? I don't know, fuming was a, that 
that when you added that to the colors, that just created a whole nother spectrum of things to work with. Yeah. Fume was a big thing back in the day. It still is, but I mean, yeah. and I, that was, that was, you know, that was it. And that was what everybody was looking for. Things that changed colors, you know, like I was the color changing glass pipe, you know, that was, that was definitely where it was at. It's really neat how fuming, you know, I, I feel really started the glass, our glass industry here. Yeah. And definitely. today it's just, it still hasn't died. I see as much or more of it out there and the techniques have just, just exploded of how these different, yeah. what they're doing, what they're not doing. And, uh, how many people do you think you've shown the path to? In- oh, geez. Gosh, many. Um, kind of hard to count. Like, I, I love to teach. I really love teaching. I love passing along all this knowledge. It really is a big gift. It's, it's, uh, the fact that I can even, that I'm even able to do this, whatever, you know, like that I've been able to make a career out of it. And it's, you know, is, is really, to me, it's a gift. It's like, it's, um, yeah, I've worked really hard at it. But when I look at it all, all of the doors that have been opened up for me over the years, um, they all come out of nowhere. And, and, and you know, I, you know, to stay, to stay humble about it, I definitely, yeah, I, I have put in some hard work. However, uh, all of the really big things have all just been a gift. They've all just kind of opened up at the right time, the right place. And, you know, it's just up to me to walk through it. Yeah. Hell yeah. that That's just crazy. One day, you know, going to a Grateful Dead show and, and it yeah. just completely changed your whole, your whole life. You, Cause you had never thought about blowing glass. No, no, so never. Cool. I'd never even, yeah. I'd never even seen that's the first time I ever even saw uh, <laughs> a glass. Pipe. I was smoking out of a, a little metal chamber pipe, <laughs> yep. can, you know, or a stone pipe or something like that, or, or just good old fashioned joints. <laughs> like it was, yeah, it was all new. It was all really new. And, 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 yeah, and say I've always been a real kind of a fire bug, not always. <laughs> My dad's over in the corner and I see him smile and it's like fire hasn't always been, a, a, you know, like I have destroyed a few things with some fire <laughs> in my interest of playing with it, you know, <laughs> like, yeah, it's caused me some issues. But, uh, you know, uh, these days it's all used for good. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Um, and then so uh, what what types of items did you really start blowing when you when you got into uh, it? Pipes and mushroom pen. That was the, the mushroom pendant was like the, the first thing I get. I mean, I tell you, like I was failure's never been an option. Like I really have a hard time with failure. Like I, so like when I start something, I, a lot of my friends say I have commitment problems, not so much in the, in the manner of, you know, I can't commit when I commit, I can't uncommit. Like it becomes every, succeeding is the only goal. And it's only like I get driven by it. And, uh, once I say, once I made this commitment to be a glass blower, there was no turning back before that. I used to build custom mahogany furniture. I thought I would always work with wood. I love working with wood. Um, but like, I didn't like living in Columbia, South Carolina. <laughs> so, and, uh, yeah, so moving to the mountains of Asheville was just such a, you know, amazing experience in itself. And then just doing the Grateful Dead tour, I was just like, this is I'm going to make my way here somehow, you know, I, I didn't, but for 10 months, you know, I, I, everything broke the first 10 months. I didn't have one thing that didn't break. I hadn't had enough money to buy a kiln at that point. So it was annealing everything in vermiculite, which was pretty common. You know, it was a common start for a lot. I don't know if it still is, but I, we and, still use it for stuff. No, right on, right on. <laughs> yeah. That was a, a real, that was the common way of annealing things, but uh, I don't know. I just, my stuff would always break 10 months straight. And then finally, finally, the first mushroom pendant didn't have a crack in it, didn't have something wrong with it. Uh, and then after that, it was like the first pipe. And I always saved all these broken things. So they weren't broken bad. They just have, you know, cracks in them that, you know, in my mind just needed to be fixed. You didn't know how to fix them yet. Um, but after somewhere after the first thing started not breaking, they all started not breaking or, you know, slowly thereafter where it was, you know, more ice. I don't know. You figured I, something I, else out. Yeah. Somehow something, I figured things out and I figured out how to make the glass kind of move the way I wanted to stay where I wanted to, to and come out of that vermiculite. All right. And I'd had this huge pile of broken things. Like, I mean, 
I was every day at this. Like, I mean, I, I, I burned up a couple of credit cards, <laughs> constantly getting handy packs set down from, from whale apparatus, more glass, more glass. And even, you know, back in those days, I kind of I had a little bit of an anger issue too. And things didn't break out. I feel bad about it. And I'd go through, I'd smash things, smash things, smash. I don't ever see people doing that anymore, which is really cool because it's not necessarily a good thing to do. Um, but back in those days, smashing glass just was like an exclamation point to anything. Like, just put the, it was, you know, and I, I don't know if it didn't come out right, it's smashed, it gets smashed. And I had piles of broken stuff. Um, some of those things were repairable. And uh, I don't know, I, when I was finally able to afford a kiln, I, I got a small aim. And, uh, and not one nice digital or anything is, you know, the analog yeah. meltdown type. <laughs> if you aren't paying attention to that pyrometer, you're going to have issues. So at any rate, I've had more than a few meltdowns in one of those kilns before. I um, bet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like and they, I don't think they even sell those kilns anymore. I don't think so either. Yeah. I haven't seen an analog <laughs> kiln in ages, ages, which is a good thing. Because <laughs> those things are definitely, uh, oh, you could have a puddle pretty fast. <laughs> and if you don't know, you don't know. And that's the thing about this whole thing that you had to go through is nobody said, watch out for this. Be careful. With yeah. it. it was just. Yeah, that's the, that again, like I'm, I, I guess now there's so many people doing it. It's such a boom um, that, you know, somebody teaching themselves is not even, that's not even a thing anymore. I mean, there's, if you're, you know, if you don't have somebody else, uh, to learn from you've got youtube and you know, youtube university is like amazing like you can learn pretty much anything on there you know mm -hmm. like this is, that didn't exist back in my time you know so trying to figure it out and trying to figure it out and finally uh, yeah i i was why it was funny i was watching a uh hendy your hendy interview interview earlier today and uh um he had mentioned something that I, I think is really Robert Mickelson is uh, who said it was, it's not really about what you can make. It's what you can fix. And I've heard that a thousand times. And even before ever hearing that I had realized that, you know, all this broken glass that I'd been storing up had value, had value. It just needed to be reworked, needed to be fixed. The cracks needed to be taken out one way or another. And I tell you, when I first got my kiln, I had that thing more than paid for 10 times over within the first week of repairs all that glass that I'd been saving up, I made whole again and then was able to take to these thirsty head shops. <laughs> and, that's a, get it. And, I, and I baked and I was just like, oh, my God. That's Why so awesome. You saved it, though, because it was it was just really neat. At that time, you had nobody to teach you, but you understood. Shit, I'm not there yet. And this this still might work. And, and glass is just dirt. So. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's all that dirt needed a little re pretty enough. Yeah, so that that that's fire, and that that's great to hear. That you know, it's it's beautiful to see that you you just get brick walls thrown at you. I can't even imagine ten months of just fucking hitting yeah. a brick wall. Like God, <laughs> like I, by the, by the time it was by the time that period of time ended, I I mean I was really wondering, am I going to be able to do this? How am I, I mean, money was pretty much it wasn't for selling, you know, weed and. and yeah, you know, other Grateful Dead things. <laughs> I would have been, I don't know what I would have been able to do back in those early days. You know, like that was, that was what was actually paying the bills, you know, until, you know, been after 10 months of every day things, it was pretty frustrating. It was frustrating. There's some, some days I didn't, wasn't out there very many hours before I was smashing something and calling it quits for the day. <laughs> you know, but yeah, you know, I guess perseverance uh, as with anything pays off. Yeah, fuck like, yeah, yeah man and, and that's life like life is not easy it's not supposed to be right. easy right and when you beat it I, I gotta imagine after 10 months and you filled your kiln up all that frustration and just like holy fuck town just was was just beautifulness like i did it yeah that had yeah. to have felt good yeah totally totally and thank you for pushing <laughs> through this you know and and becoming a mentor and so that's usually what i ask is like did you have mentors coming up through this um, really at, at that time no i mean i was like uh it wasn't really until i went to school at penland that i really got to see other people do it um there uh, after i'd been doing it in nashville for about a year another uh group of deadheads came up from columbia south carolina uh where's where where i was at originally um that I had known and, and uh, uh, Ethan Murray is one of the, the names from 
from way back then. I don't even think he blows glass anymore. But there, there are a couple others that I, I'm sure I know didn't stick with it either. But at the time, uh, there was a small group. There was like four or five of us uh, um, at the time. Mark Harmon and uh, gosh, I'm not, I'm too old names. <laughs> get, get, fit, get to be over 50 years old and start forgetting things. I think there's only so much room out there in my head. <laughs> Same with all of us. <laughs> right. So at any rate, like, but yeah, dude, uh, by then after a year, there was a group of us there in Asheville and, and occasionally, you know, people would, you know, come by each other's studio, but it was still, and even though like really that amongst our, our group, you know, it was a welcome thing. Didn't really do it. it just still that somewhere that ingrained, got to keep this to yourself. Don't want other people to know, don't want other people to see because they're going to take away your, your dollar. And you, I mean, and like, that was kind of just the, the unwritten rule. It, you know, it really, really is the basic thing of survival is if I know something and I can get this food, money, whatever it is, I'm not sharing it with somebody because we are pure competitors. We're, we are the biggest predator of all predators. And so it's deep into us to hold on to that knowledge. So I feel yeah. it's rare yes. to be in this society where we're just throwing it out there now. Like, yeah, that, that, yeah. That now it seems, yeah, it, I think it's beautiful. Actually, I think it's a really amazing thing. I, I love teaching. I love to be able to share this, you know, knowledge that I have. Like sometimes I think I for, have forgotten more of all the things that I've learned in 27 years, um, you know, than I, than I have. Yeah, it's actually, it'll be 27 years and three more days. I, now, dude, that I, is I, I mind boggling when you say that. I got 17 years. And when I say it, I'm like, I'm fucking old at this shit. Yeah, right, but right. man, without you out there breaking these molds, I got I can't say thanks enough for it, man. Like that that stuff is what's opened this whole thing up and it's fucking awesome. And it is cool. awesome. It is awesome. Have have you been able to take any classes? Um I know you oh, yeah. teach. Many, so you many, many. Yeah, I was I was really blessed to um so short in, in 2000, I suffered an, an accident that like almost severed completely my left arm off at the oh, elbow. Shit. I don't really, I don't have a bicep here and I don't feel anything below the elbow. Can't close my fingers. I, I can close my fingers, but I can't open my fingers. I kind of have to have something else to sort of help open them all the way. Thumb doesn't work at all on the left hand and being a right hander, you know, that's like your hand that holds all the weight. That's the hand that actually holds peace. You, you know what I mean? The, you know, so uh, and that actually happened on, on July 6th of 2000 and glass, I got severed by glass pretty bad. It was uh, yeah, quite an experience. One that I don't know much about because I had lost consciousness and was, you know, I don't know, dead for two minutes before, you know, they were able to get me to the hospital. Or whatever. Holy was, fuck. It, I only know from the, all the police things and the, everything, you know, when you finally come to, but a lot of miracles happened that day. And, you know, I kind of, glass was at that point my ultimate passion and but i thought i was gonna lose it i was like my arm was bound to my body for like six months after that like i couldn't even move because of all the surgeries that they had done to like reconstruct everything i mean normally at 85 percent severed the, the answer is to amputate the rest of it it's not to sew it back on and again another one of those great miracles that just i don't even know my life got saved i was you know no oxygen in my brain for over two minutes i shouldn't even be able to talk to you i talk fine you know, I mean, there's just so many I, I'm and that's kind of really all of that. That incident is what really started giving me all this gratitude for all that I've been given. Shortly after that, uh, I had met a, uh, a mentor and uh, she helped send me to Penland. And she's really like a uh, wealthy old lady that lived at the end of my street. You know, and like because uh, of her, her help, I, I uh, was able to go to many classes for and during that time, also, as you remember, the early 2000s, the Ashcroft pipe scene, you know, deal mm -hmm. and all of it went down in 2002. And like I said, that was like I had taken my first penland class the fall before uh, with Roger Paramore, actually. And uh, I kind of really thought maybe pipes for a while weren't going to be my my thing after this whole Ashcroft thing. So I started sinking it into goblet making, which I really I dig a lot. I really um, super love. And but I've had to, I had to relearn everything. Being now I'm like doing everything backwards. Every my right hand has to do all the work, you know. Right, like right. It, again, it's it was like one of those pipes is going, my love is going, and I'm not going to lose glass because I'd be failing. And as I told you in the earlier, yeah, failure is not. You know, I have this commitment problem. 
<laughs> so yeah, I sold my soul <laughs> you know, for this molten uh, medium, but I don't know. I'm all right with it. Yeah. Like, like most glass blowers, I think you're a little bit crazy and that's okay. Cause we need <laughs> and uh glass blowing fucking hard, man. And yeah, it that's is, it is. It sucks to hear that you had that accident, but it's really neat to see that your passion and your your just perseverance pushed right through it, and and then yeah, have that become I, an I, excuse. It's 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 odd. Like I I, it's, you know, two decades ago now almost. You know, like or it's more. Yeah, it's yeah. It's, 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 <laughs> like holy shit, dude. That's you'd figure that. I don't know. It's definitely done. It's made a lot of changes. It's done, definitely brought me through a lot of changes, but uh, um, I've just learned to, do, you know, adapt. That's, you know, kind of, I don't know. Before, before my, I've always thought my spirit animal was lizard, like especially the one that, whatever, the skink that loses its tail and regrows, you know, like that's kind of always, you know, uh, now it's more or less the moth, you know, but it's my, you know, it's definitely my spirit animal now, but Back in the day, I I, I really uh, I identified with that tailless lizard. <laughs> yeah. So, How did you get your uh, your glass blown name? Uh, so I mean, I'm sure as you're aware, at the summertime we all blow glass at nighttime, you know. And, I, and unless you're in a nice professional studio, you off to your garage with the, the door open and lights on and and moths. Yeah. They can't do anything. The fly to the. It's only mission they have in their life is to fly to the light and that's me i love it man um where do you get your inspiration and your creativity from that's really uh kind of a i looked at that question when you came in and i, I pre-read all of those last like this is gonna be a hard one because i uh really i'm still learning to be an artist i never had any kind of art influence or anything growing up schooling um you know music was my art uh, other than that uh, uh well you yeah. did wood too and that is a that's yeah, a, I, an yes, art yeah. craft it, but that's I, well, I always thought of art as like um drawing and painting and which i can't do if my to save my life i can't sketch a stick figure dog and you not be like that's a freaking awesome duck bill platypus <laughs> right you know like i i have no i cannot my i don't know what it is but with three-dimensional things I fall into place somehow, like somehow I, I see things that way, but on a two dimensional plan, I can't draw a paint. I can hardly write my name. No joke. <laughs> it's like, or at least in a legible way that anybody would be able to decipher. That's what I wrote. <laughs> right. So, do, you, yeah. do you just get visions as you're, you're just uh, building it and then just kind of go more organically? Yeah, that's pretty much. Yeah. That's uh, I kind of, yeah. If you look at the flow of my pieces, it's kind of, you'd almost, yeah, they, they build themselves. I mean, unless I, I, I do a lot of custom work, um, actually primarily custom commissions. It's, it's rare that I have things to sell to a store, you know, it's like, I'm staying so behind with, with custom things that it's like, I don't know, you know, I'd like to get, I'd like to get my work out there into other galleries. And I really would like really would. Um, but it's finding the time to like stay on top of all my commission things and, and, keep you know there are a few stores that sell my stuff generally glass vegas is like the you're the, really the only opportunity to even get things like that or at least get started with me that way you know um there's only yeah. so much time brother and only right. one of you that's what i'm saying like hey, keeping people on back order for half a year seems like a difficult thing to, to do but people still keep putting orders it's almost like it doesn't matter sometimes you know like they just want you and that's a really that's you know thank god for that uh, you know like i really yeah, yeah. there's only one of you man almost and, getting hooked up thinking about how, how grateful i am you know that 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 is where i'm at you know like that people want my things bad enough to wait with a deposit you know like for half a year to get right. it like really that i've never really i never saw this ever congrats off to you i think you deserve it and uh it, it's fucking badass your work your work you know 27 years into something really shows and you never stopped at it you didn't just stop and say hey this is my one little thing it just kept expanding uh you know it looks like you're really into dichro and that shit is hard it's to work primarily. yeah that that is that is where it primarily is for me that's definitely love that material 
I understand it really well. Uh, Absolutely. And, uh, you know, that's kind of, that's, yeah, that's it's sort of what's made my name for sure. Yeah. I mean, whatever. I mean, yeah, if it wasn't for that, I don't know. I'd, I'd get lost in the mix of everybody else if it wasn't for my understanding of that particular material that, you know, you know, got to put some bling in your thing. You know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, the sparkle in it, it's always just freaking awesome. Um, did you have any periods of time in your career where you like completely shifted? I know with the accident, that seemed like a, a yeah, that, that shifted things. Um, it was a more of a relearning how to do things, you know, kind of opposite of what I used to, how I used to do them, you know, like, and making the right hand have to, you know, pick up for the slack that the left hand can't help with, you know, I mean, it still is some help, but not like, normal you know that normal people can use their both hands it definitely is not like that i definitely struggle a little bit it just but it just really it's not even so much that it's a struggle it just slows things down one of the cool things is that dike road that uh, requires you to move slow as it is and that's kind of how it really got that's how my relationship with that material began is that it likes very highly oxidized flame which is a much cooler flame which is not a production flame and yep. leave that product proto world behind this material kind of came into my world at the same at, at all that same time when i'm relearning to do stuff and like i found this fascinating thing you know you know it's just like man and it requires you to move slower in order for it to keep that bling because you have a much cooler flame and it just all I don't know. My love affair with that still hasn't ended. Hell yeah. Uh, so what are your favorite items to blow now? Uh, would it be pipes or would it be uh, goblets? Uh, oh, I, goblets are real skill builders. Um, unfortunately, uh, I don't really make them unless they're ordered. And I haven't had too many. Last year's whole COVID shutdown didn't make a lot for a lot of outdoor weddings. So I haven't like you know, or even weddings in general, I think people were all, you know, kind of put those things off. And I haven't really had a commissioned order for a set of goblets in a good long time, a year and a half or two years even, you know. Right. Yeah, but so that that's a beautiful I'd thing to take, note that uh, I, if people are out there looking, don't forget, these are fucking awesome things for weddings. And oh, totally. it's totally. something they can pull out every year, you know, every yeah. anniversary. It's, yep, it's built with love. It's given with love. But I don't know of a better, a better thing for a wedding than a couple cups. Totally. Oh, yeah, again, that's and it's a, even if I'm not, if I have friends that get married, they get that they get toasting glasses. That's their. That's their. Yeah, that's my wedding gift every time. You know, like it's perfect. It really is. It's perfect thing for, for a wedding gift. I definitely believe. Um, yeah, I don't know. Other than other than you know, switching to gob uh, jewelry has really been. I'm I love making jewelry. I like, uh, yeah, pendants is a really big thing for me. And in all reality, when anybody comes to me to learn things, it's generally pendants that I like to teach people first. This is more, there's more money in the pendant market. Um, when you look at what it costs to make a really heady pendant versus what it costs to make a really heady pipe, all the right. materials, but I mean, again, because it's something you wear, it's perceived as a much higher value than something you put on it. I just can't really describe it any other way. And, there's no overhead. There's no, you know, I mean, it's your time is really what, what it goes into it, you know, like that makes it, you know, valuable. Yeah. Um, a lot but as far materials. as the amount of it, cost of everything that to actually produce a, pen, a really heavy pendant, there's nothing. There's nothing. Do you prefer you know? uh, hollow pendants or solid pendants for? I like them both. I like them both. I mean, and combining different, you know, both, both together. I mean, again, I, I make some pretty, crazy almost like how would somebody ever wear that but yet they just bought it for me for five hundred dollars pendant <laughs> you know, right. just um yeah i mean again like i i the amount of create is a smaller amount of glass so the amount of creativity that you can or the amount of weirdness that you can uh, go with uh is a little bit less than with some crazy heady pipe I and mean, that's kind of a, that's one of the things that the glass just talks to me um sometimes it Actually, most times, unless it's specifically commissioned a certain way, it ends up being far more than than what I ever thought when I began. You guys yeah. just go into a dance with it and then yeah. work it? it? Yes, yeah, dude. It just it starts talking to me as on oh, just add this here, add this horn here. Horns are big. I don't know. I guess I'm a horny guy or something, but like 
<laughs> horns, are, <laughs> horns are a big part of my my work you know like so, and then you know of course i like that dicro and the, the filigree just works super awesome and yeah i don't know like they always grow they grow from <laughs> it's hard like for me to to keep a pipe even to not put an opal on it like mm -hmm. or a p or a pendant like i mean everything has to have an opal or 10 you know like I, I, to me i mean it's just, oh, they're so cool they're little they just and every angle is just so many different colors it's it's crazy how we're effectuated with just blingy light. <laughs> we're pretty simple creatures, almost like a moth to a flame. You just see the light. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yes. Good analogy. Uh, what's your uh, favorite color to work with besides <laughs> dichro? Um. Oh, I really love galaxy a lot. I like the. I love I, black is my favorite color in. When they started adding, adding sparkles to black, that <laughs> color, I was just like, "This is so perfect." <laughs> so yeah, I play with a lot of galaxy, um, and, and because I had my thing with the molten aura colors, I really loved them for a good little while. It's nice that North Star's making cheaper uh, versions of those. <laughs> I definitely dig that, um, and so I feel I, they're a little more compatible. I think so too. Yes, I think yes. I, I definitely not just the expense, but the compatibility seems to be a lot better as well. Uh, yeah, they, they don't have the same shockiness as uh, the Molten Aura stuff. Not the same. Again, I love, still love those colors. Still have lots of... And they have you know, a special, like, luster to them that, that North Star don't have. North Star is close. I, yeah, it's close. It's that. I, I, would, I would say close enough. <laughs> like, close it, enough it, for me. It, I can afford it. I love that guy. Yeah, he's definitely, you know, again, I think, yeah, I, I like, that's probably, if, yeah, if it matters, that's definitely my... North Star would be my go-to company, you know, to, I mean, there's really nothing in their palette that I don't like, you know, like, or that doesn't work or whatever. I mean, probably should be making plugs, but go Abe. <laughs> what, uh, what color don't you like then? If, if you had to uh, use a color and somebody had me, it. I don't use, I never have liked them since the day, since the day the Crayola colors came out, the, um, I've always, I've just, they don't speak to me at all. They never have. Like, uh, and you, I think I've probably made made a pipe that had cadmium colors in it twice in my entire career. Like, just not. I don't know. Like, and maybe it's also because everybody else does like them, because everybody else does use them. That being different, as I saw importance in that. Yeah. And I just really, you know, I like. I also like very trend like silvered colors you know the, the translucence that change you know like the amber purple family and you know, things it. like that i will always I will always always those will be favorites you know i like that kind of effect that oil on water type type look is really amazing yeah it's so neat how glass is uh you know it's the only uh medium i think where the artist gets to experience the color that that the end user doesn't because we see it when it's glowing when it's these different things oh. and very good point. Very good. I think you're right. I mean, yeah. Again, uh, the making of these things, I mean, is yeah, we get to experience it a lot more. The end user just sees the final result, but all the process of change, especially if anything silvered or, you know, again, is 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 cool. It's cool to be able to like get that process going and stopping it in different places, you know, because these colors have so many, such a wide variance of effects that can be uh, uh, attained, you know that. Just as like, they get higher, different colors or different things as they're glowing, they look different. And totally, it's just, it's just beautiful. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Yeah. Um, what do you consider to be uh, one of the most challenging pieces you've ever attempted? I actually brought that with me. Yes. <laughs> this is actually uh, a collab piece with. Uh, well, I've, I've been really good friends with her, Julie Riggs, for 20 years. We went to Penland together. And at any rate, uh, she's definitely my my favorite friend of all in the glass world. And uh, she collaborated when I was living in Oregon here in the past while. I've been in Michigan for a year. Um, but prior to that, I was uh, up in, in Oregon for a couple of years. Um, that was where I left Denver to go to. And, and at any rate... Uh, it was nice when I was up there because I got to, you know, to blow, well, I got to blow a lot with a lot of awesome artists while I was in Colorado, but 
when I went to Oregon, that, that really, that, you know, got to, got to hang out with my favorites. Yeah. Uh, so it, uh, one week we decided uh, we were going to try to do something a little different and, and crazy. And, and she's not, she doesn't feel very comfortable with, with Dicro, but like, she's a hell of a sculptor and like a lot of things that she does that, you know, I just, uh, when I was able to convince her to do a full Dicro uh, piece, I sent a picture of this, but the skull is, is Holy Julie, Julie Riggs. Um, I did all the prep for all of her, all of her Dicro work, but the skull part is all, that's her sculpting. Of course, my horny horns there. Um, but then, yeah, then I, yeah, we say that, this is, we worked on this probably two separate week long sessions and it wasn't just that piece there, but we, you know, threw together a whole six piece set. Our nice, cool little, the rigs pendant. And, you know, I, I hadn't had, didn't have a fast, fast tron at the time I do now, but like, I just loved her fastening. So we had to add some faceted pieces, you know, to everything. <laughs> And all, all the components are all, you know, fully dichro and, and yeah, I don't know. Like, I, I just love this. It's, it, I've had a few offers on the set. Uh, not that either of them were, were not uh, high enough. I, it's just a hard one to let go. And I hope she, she'll probably see this and hear me say that and be mad. <laughs> but, she wants yeah. to get paid too, huh? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, probably, you know. I uh, probably should have accepted a couple offers, but I, I love this thing so much. And there's so much, I guess, for me, sentiment, you know, because she's such an amazing person and such a good friend. And uh, yeah, again, like for 20 years, like, you know, there. So it's, I don't know, has a lot of meaning for me. So, like, even you might I, you just know, have to I, buy it from her. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe that'll have to happen one day. Yeah. <laughs> that's cool anyway. though that that you know you got to work with her and it was such a special time all the the everything and you just got this and you're not really willing to let it go i love it yeah i mean i don't know like i, I i've heard you ask some other there's a couple other pieces a nice cool scoop dabber all yep. fast, another chisel dabber all faceted with opals it's so, so yeah. cool how those facets just make the one opal turn to just I know. I love it. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I know if you're familiar with the lap dancer uh, fastening arm, it's kind of the new thing that's been brought out, but it, it's, it makes you able to use a lapidary wheel that you may already have, not have to buy a whole entire uh, fastening like Fastron or, or Graves or whatever, you know, uh, machine. And you can actually add this lap dancer wheel. The inventor of this is a very good friend of mine. I'm actually going to go spend 4th of July with him He's here in Michigan. Uh, and at any rate, um, I am just, I'm, I haven't really released too many of these faceted things that I've been doing yet. I've shown a couple pictures of some stuff, but uh, mm -hmm. I'm super stoked with this. And I think that's going to be a new realm for me is faceting things. I'm really loving all the crazy things that can be made of, of, of all this. Yeah, it, it's next level. If you got to take that, we can cut it out. Oh, no. no we're good. We're good. All, all right. No, it's not more important than this. <laughs> um, do you collaborate often? Not as often as I would like. Um, I recently, I guess, uh, yeah, maybe five months ago, went down um, back down to, well, I ended, actually I ended up being Boulder for two weeks at Pogo's collabing on, on all kinds of crazy, crazy concoctions. Um, nice. But uh, yeah, like uh, that was an amazing experience. I loved every minute there. Uh, yeah. Yeah, because I'm still enjoying it. that joint I smoked earlier. Was <laughs> some of his gloriousness. <laughs> I'm still enjoying that from February. <laughs> Hell yeah. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. fresh. Um, what's the most, uh, most amount of time you put into a piece? Would it be that whole collaboration there? That's weeks. Uh, but... yeah, that's probably one of the longer. That's definitely the longer one of the longer ones. Um, and it's I, I I don't know. Like I I have a hard. I don't have a good concept of time. I don't own a watch, don't have a calendar. Uh, <laughs> I literally like my day starts when I open my eyes and it ends when I close them. Some weeks may have three days in them. Some weeks may have 11, you know, I, that's kind of my whole. Yeah. So like how many hours I end up spending it. There are definitely pieces I've been in the studio for like 48 straight freaking hours, you know, like right. that's normal work week, but that's me obsessing on getting this thing right and done and and 
thinking that, you know, starting, stopping and starting again, just wasn't going to be beneficial for the whole outcome, you know, and the, she, you like two days go by and oh my God, I haven't slept yet. And you're like, thank God for Starbucks, you know, <laughs> but I mean, you so you forget about, you know, like it just, I don't know, you come in this, it's a zone, you know, mm-hmm. uh, I'm sure you know all about it, dude, you get into it. Like, and it's like, you just, there's no, we're on a mission, not a yeah. mission to, you know, finish this thing, you know, make this, and it's going to be amazing. And like, yeah, those are generally the pieces that come up best. I think for me, at any rate, there's no time I, to them. It's just, it's just you and them dancing. Yeah. 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 Yeah, that's kind of one of the, the that's one of the nice things about the uh, you know having freedom to do you know focus on commissioned things. Mostly, it's stuff is I get a lot of artistic freedom to do whatever they have. You know, basically tell me a style to you know looking for you know recycler or bobbler, or dry piece or whatever you know or, or show show me some pictures of my previous work that you like parts of you know and, and let's see what we can come up with in your own way. I mean, just, I haven't done any production, anything really. I mean, other than maybe a pendant. Um, <laughs> and so years, it's, I couldn't even tell you when I made, last made a production pipe. Some Somewhere after Penland, maybe. I don't know. Like I it love it. been a long time. I thought this, you know. Yeah. And I look back and I look back on the, you know, my archive of pictures, which I didn't even like take, start taking pictures to like four or five years ago. Mm-hmm. Like I, most things never saw a camera back in the old, before the iPhone, you know, and I, I was, you know, tuned into all of that. I was like, uh, yeah, I, Instagram, Facebook, whatever. I don't even know. Like, I just, I don't know how I got by before them, before then really. <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's a beautiful yeah. thing with phones and Instagram. It's been allow artists and everybody to really document their lives. And, Cause it's yeah. nice to have that memory, but, but going back 20 years, I, I mean, I wish we could see some of the things you were, you had and, yeah, I you know, yeah, like, like times I've had a you know a professional photographer take uh, pictures of some stuff, and I got some of those. And I had, back in the day when you were like, so you know, when I was getting out of the pipe thing, um, you know, or thinking I had to because of the whole Ashcroft stuff, you know, pipe dream thing. Um, uh, I started having to learn like what do galleries require? It's not like going into a head shop and they're like you know paying you cash on the spot, mm-hmm. like all consignment. It's all like, you, you know, and you're going to get 50% if that, you know, especially if that when in your you know beginning days, like usually the, you might get 40%, 35%. You're nobody. Yeah, like, you're just. Yeah. No, yeah. Or no money because nobody's buying. Yeah. It just sits there and sits there and sits there, you know, like, um, but slides. So remember those old slides, you know, that people watch pictures of, you know, like this from the little carousel machine. That was how you had to present your work to these galleries that was like that was the wow. the garden way is is slides you sent them of stuff that they could then look at you know and whew, so glad we aren't doing that anymore <laughs> like, no that was out. yes <laughs> you know like, getting those things made and getting pictures to even again the whole photography thing back then and how you present your art to new places because it's not like you know you're it's, it's just there's a different concept at half time they didn't want to know like definitely now with the whole in the, the early, you know, two thousands, um, saying you are a pipe maker to a gallery was like <laughs> death. Right, uh, right. That was, I mean, it was there was not respect in pipe making. You know, we were we were the scourges of that, you know, glass art thing. You know, it was not, you know, other glass workers that didn't make pipes definitely had no respect for the pipe maker. You know, like again, it was we were the yeah, paraphernalia the degenerates, maker. right? Yeah. Generates bingo exactly that's it yeah and it's crazy because without those degenerates making the pipes this boro silicate art world would not be here right now you know i i remember going down to uh glass craft and don't mention mm-hmm. you're a pipe maker here and it's like uh-huh. everybody fucking <laughs> buying glass down here is a pipe maker and you don't like me you like my money but you don't like what i do what's yep. going on so yeah yeah that's that's <laughs> times have right. changed but they were scared also probably of the you know the prior pipe dream stuff and everybody just wore on that, drugs that fear linked for a good little while like i mm-hmm. that fear really i, I mean decades I, yeah like that that was a yeah that thing lingered for a minute for mm-hmm. sure uh, uh, is it ever happened again no one ever expected me it was 
the internet was booming, you know, prior to that, you know, and the pipes were everywhere. There's more pipe pages than there were porn pages. Yeah. <laughs> It was like, it was the thing, you know? And then just all of a sudden have it overnight crashed and federally wrong. And everybody's like, I don't pull glass. <laughs> you know, right. no? Not uh, doing anything wrong. And, you know, all of a sudden you're this crim- yeah. criminal. Well, yeah. Like what yeah, though? Yeah. Freak, man. Yeah. Um, have you ever competed in any events? Uh, not really competed well i don't know a couple times i went up to the eugene glass school uh and then and, and played around up, up there in some small competitions never you know it was weird like actually the one that i did best in was we had to, we were all given uh a random bag full of soft glass full of moretti 104 and then told different themes of things we would like so it would be uh one actually one on was uh make something out of a movie theater you had these tiny little shorts of, of color, broken pieces of color, maybe a little tiny stub of clear. And you had to make something in like 10 minutes. You had to like, you know, that was <laughs> that you would find in a movie theater. And it made a bag of popcorn. And uh, yeah, oh, I, that was my most proudest moment. I swear to God, because that soft glass, that variety glass doesn't play like borrow at all. And at that was all. the first time you had used it too, probably, yeah. huh? <laughs> totally. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was... Um, <laughs> yeah it was a unique experience that's for sure but yeah a popcorn beat it <laughs> oh, yeah. do you consume can i mean obviously you've been with us do you consume cannabis then um yeah always yeah daily i wouldn't know i was always a pretty uh hyperactive kid like uh, you know ridland even when i was a little, you know young 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 age um at any rate like so the cannabis calms me down keeps me focused keeps me centered like i couldn't it's definitely a medicine for me for sure i smoke way less of it these days than i used to mm-hmm. um years ago but uh, you know you had to go through an ounce in a week now i can make an ounce last month yeah <laughs> but, potency um, i think has to do with it a little bit as well it maybe. is it is and i don't know like it just seems like the less i smoke the more i stay high i don't know it's uh, <laughs> i must have built a level up or something inside of me that uh, <laughs> i'm just I'm permanently on cloud nine. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. And I think that kind of does happen over time. You know, like you just, you find your perfectness that, that you need. Yeah. Maybe. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Again, yeah. There, yeah, there, there are times when I can woof it down with the best of them. They're mostly, I'm, you know, a few joints a day and I'm, I'm good. You know, that's. That so do you me. prefer flour then over concentrate? Oh, I concentrate. Jesus. I'm like, Finding the countertops, my legs don't fail me now. Oh my god! Yeah, and after that, it's straight to bed. <laughs> yeah, I have never. It's funny too. Like, um, I thought living in Colorado, I would get this great Colorado tolerance. <laughs> like, and I'd be able to do that. No, no, two is always at least probably two too much. <laughs> at least one too many. <laughs> yeah. Like, I've never. I mean, yeah, even my <laughs> studio there in Denver, it was. I, I had this big chaise lounge perfectly laid out in front of the dab station because it would be like me do a dab and then psh, I'm right back in that chaise lounge for nap time. <laughs> yeah. So that pretty probably put a, uh, a hindrance on your production level. Yes. Introduction totally. to dabs. Yeah. And dabs are uh, a nighttime. I mean, I, don't get me wrong. I love them. I love the flavor. I love, and I, yeah, I like diamonds. I like all, I like all these uh, terpy things you know but mm-hmm. it just as far as productivity goes yeah not gonna happen i don't know one i had never really learned how to stop at one it's always you know if one is good <laughs> two is be great right that just goes to figure <laughs> <laughs> so, like i said two is usually too too many <laughs> yeah, for me so yeah i don't know yeah def, but flour i'm good all day i you know especially if i stay away from like the uh, you know, heavy indicas like if i stay in the hybrids or the or sativa leaning hybrids I'm, I'm golden like i can oh, yeah. i can flow flow well and i think it's if i did if i if i don't have any cannabis which that never happens but um i met you know pretend or i remember back in the day when it happened <laughs> yeah, like it was a bad day bad day <laughs> like no flow no no i mean it's like i my mind's in a million different places and i can't yeah i just i don't even know like it's it's medicine. It's medicine. It's definitely helping absolutely. Yeah. Hell yeah. Um, do you have any hobbies outside of glass? Yeah, I do this really cool thing. It's uh, blow glass. Um, when I'm not blowing glass, 
Yeah, for work, I'm blowing glass for fun. I love it. That's my same hobbies. One, I hope. I mean, I swear, I got. I, I can't be the only one. I know it. No, no, uh, I'm I'm right there with you, man. Right like, on. Yeah, yeah. I, it's an awesome hobby. It's an awesome livelihood. It's a uh, like I'm off to the flame, bro. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> so, so with that, do you still have the same passion today as when you first started? You know, I go through times. And I, like I mean, this past week, a lot of things have broken, and that's a little disheartening. I feel like fuck you know i can things you know again so it's, it's been a harsh week um but you know after this interview it's like i'm i'm raging for it right now i'm raging for it right now like i i, I it's been a really beautiful day and yeah it's like you know, i'm out here at my dad's where i barely rarely ever come i'm actually gonna come back for dinner even so it's like nice. run 30 miles go play at the studio for a couple hours and be right back here again so it's like yeah that's kind of it's this is a an inspiring day very inspiring day so thank you a lot for that well thank you for making this happen because if you didn't make this i i wouldn't even have this opportunity to sit down so thank you so much anderson i appreciate it man um what can we look forward to in the future from your work um more jewelry more jewelry hell yeah i i I also make a lot of rings. I don't know, like, and I think about all the fascinating ideas for the rings, uh, you know, bracelets, all kinds. Of, I, I'm, I'm seeing, I, I, I also, uh, so I don't know, about 15, 16 years ago, I started doing cremation memorials and uh, I put some tutorials on my YouTube channel. Um, step by step for years, they've been up there and people have really taken those and, and run with them. And I'm really, I'm, I'm glad for that. But cremation jewelry is cremation things, uh, not even just jewelry pendants or whatever, but uh, all kinds of small memorials is really starting to be a thing. And I'm not really, I, I don't know. It's like I have lines of people's loved ones waiting to be, you know, memorialized uh, permanently in glass. It's kind of an honor to be chosen to do Absolutely. that. Absolutely. It's really, it's really <laughs> special because it's so neat how the, the, the ashes can go into the glass. It's made with love. It's, I find it one of the coolest, if, if that's where you're going with the cremation thing, something out of glass is just, I yeah. mean, you can get a yes. pendant drinking glass, a uh, pen, like. Yeah, I've, yeah, again, anything. I've put the cremains in everything you can imagine, and it's like, uh, I'm, I don't know, I didn't really see that for a minute as like, that might be a direction that, you know, my time gets spent is doing it, but over the past few months, it's been yeah, I have a huge line of them. <laughs> it's like nice. it's uh, made up, you know, and, and uh, <clears throat> yeah, so I think that's going to be, you see a lot of that, you know, and I kind of, again, with this whole faceting uh, contraption I have, uh, it's really, I don't know, like uh, the, the possibilities of those going together really nicely are, are I think, infinite. Yeah, so yeah, a lot of well, faceting is in my near future jewelry and you know smaller items i'd like to yeah i recently bought well I, I bought my second lathe already recently and i've been making dichro tubing preps for other artists to to use you know that's all yeah. perfectly nine millimeters thick non-stretched and and you can roll with this you know like because uh, again a lot of people get intimidated by the dichro but once mm -hmm. it's protected uh, as long as you keep that that oxygen and that flame hard here you can work it forever yeah, so oh, yeah. and like so making preps for others to use is kind of that's another thing that I'm trying to really get off the ground, you know. Like okay. So anybody watching any artist, they can hit you up for yeah, uh, totally. some dichro prep. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Fresh, for sure. Fresh. That's good to know. Um and then uh I guess do you have any shout outs or special things? Did we miss anything that you'd like to add? Um I don't know. <laughs> it's been a pretty amazing interview. I think covered a lot of ground. Um, yeah. Like uh, again, I guess a uh, shout out to Dichroic Alchemy. My boys there, you know, uh, if it wasn't for all their amazing product, I wouldn't have made the name that I am for myself. <laughs> I think So I owe a lot of gratitude for them. And they say like, they've all, they've been there for me through days since day one. Like that was, <laughs> yeah. So at any rate, like, uh, Definitely to them. Uh, shout out to Julie. And uh, yeah, I don't know. 
all the amazing artists that I've uh, over the past few years been able to, to run into and work with and, uh, and those that, uh, like to get down with something with me get a hold of me because i'm definitely love to put more collabs on my on my uh resume <laughs> well that'll definitely be me and we'll talk more about that later uh um, right on but ben i want to say uh what's the best place also for everybody to go find you is it instagram instagram yeah uh, it's kind of crazy like you know it, it, a lot of people a lot of artists have done really good on instagram mm -hmm. i still to this day most of my orders come from facebook however i'm really having a problem with facebook and what it's becoming and uh i'm this close to not being there anymore you know which is a really hard thing to say because like that's where my primary income has come from so please anybody uh, follow me on instagram <laughs> you know definitely i need to you know get more exposure on there that's probably uh yeah, this needs to be my focus because I'm just tired of the face gram, face, face crook, baloney. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how long Instagram's going to be any different, but whatever. Uh, that's kind of where my, yeah, like a moth to the flame on Instagram. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us. This was like you mind opening for me. I am, I'm so grateful that you took this time and uh, thank you so much. Peace, brother. Yeah, now that was pretty freaking awesome. Like, it just blows me away sitting down with these uh, OGs about how humble they are, the you know, how they had to just struggle with learning through stuff that seems so, so easy now. I know how we train people in my studio and like the learning curve I see these kids going through is, is out of control, you know, and the, to see the struggle of this guy going through 10 months because you didn't have that there, it's just, Man, it's so neat just to see that, and uh, I really love that you know he, he pushed through this. It's just awesome, I love it. Uh, super awesome. Uh, it's a true way to elevate mind, body, spirit. I uh, wanna throw it out there as well. We have Elevate Dolls and Elevate Gents. It's our brand ambassador program. Check it out, it's really cool, and uh, we need you to help spread this word, help spread the thing of Elevate, and you know, uh, spreading the word of these amazing glass artists out there. Um, as well as we have Elevate Veterans. Check that out. It's a cool way to help uh, some vets that, you know, helped us out here. Anyways, thanks a lot for joining us. Uh, subscribe to this, tell your friends about it, and elevate mind, body, spirit. <laughs>